Hi, in this Three Pillars Academy episode, Marsha and I are going to talk about reverse mentoring and how it's a tool for improving effectiveness in a multi-generational workplace. Marsha, kick us off. Okay. Hi, my name is Marsha Florio. I am the Executive Director of the America East Academic Consortium. Um, I, um, so far in my career, I've had five different full-time jobs. Uh, I've got my first cell phone when I was in my 30s, and I had to carry an extra bag for it to fit. Um, I get two newspapers delivered to my house in the morning, and I still have a landline in my home. Um, additionally, when I come to work on the subway, I read a library book. I know a little bit about social media platforms. I'm learning more and more, and I really like to spend as little time as possible on my cell phone. And I'm Jessica Ramberg, Director of Digital Media at the America East Conference. I've been here, this is my third year now, and it's my first full-time position job. I am constantly on my cell phone. I've had a cell phone since I was 12 years old. I use it to find my news. I scroll through my Twitter feed. My most used apps are Instagram, Twitter, Netflix. Easily average over three hours a day on my phone pick it up about 60 times a day, and I've never owned a landline or a home phone. And I'm here representing the younger generation. As you know, Jess, when I came to the America East Conference just a little over two years ago, I came from a campus of over 2,100 employees um, to our office, which has 11 employees, all younger than myself. So in that regard, it was a, a big transition for me an exciting transition, but a big transition. Um, and it also, our conference, as you know, has a very high social media and digital IQ. I had zero IQ in social media and did the digital universe. Uh, I, didn't, I, wasn't a present on I was not a presence on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, and I really needed to, to learn those quickly to, do, uh, to carry out my role. Um, and I needed a mentor, and I needed someone in the younger generation to help me do that. And Jessica, I turned to her, and she's been my mentor ever since. I can tweet. I know what a tweet deck is now. I know what hashtags are. I tweet often and, and um, frequently for my, for my job. Um, but Jessica also was very helpful in the background and the philosophy of social media and how to use that. Um, I got a little excited and wanted to get an Instagram account, and she was immediately very, very cautious about that, and, and really talked to me, talked to me about um, not needing it and the reasons why. So you were very helpful in helping me understand that, and I feel pretty comfortable in in my presence in social media, and I know that if I need help, I can always turn to Jess. And through our relationship, it was more than just this typical reverse mentoring relationship that we see because you had been in many different roles, different work environments, had the experience that I lack. I was able to, through topics and um, issues that I was facing or challenges in my position on um, having those challenging conversations, how to manage up, how to communicate effectively with my coworkers and colleagues and to me, that was valuable stuff because I only have been, this is my only, my first full-time mm -hmm. position. And so even through this reverse mentor um, relationship, when I'm teaching Mar Marsha how to you know, navigate social media and Twitter, I, al I too also get a lot out of that. And I think it's really important as younger generations to be aware and recognize that, that we don't know everything. And because we now have a full-time job and we're getting a paycheck, that we're gonna be changing our organization in a couple days. And so you've taught me the patience and kind of learn about myself and how to have that dynamic in a workplace. Here are a couple fun cartoons we wanted to show of different generations. I know you're new, but there have been a few complaints about your attire. And the next one says, can you hang on a sec? I think I just took another picture of my ear. These were just some fun cartoons we wanted to show these different dynamics in the multi-generational workplace. 
in this conversation, Marcia and I by no means want to reflect or target any generations in a negative way. We're here to learn more about each other and just to have some fun. So just as you know, we are an example of kind of the contemporary workplace today where there are now research shows four and five generations that are actually working together. And with those four and five generations come a lot of different perspectives on a lot of different topics. Um, for instance, in um, the older generation, people like, like myself and older, 55 and older, are tending to stay in the workplace longer. Um, by the year 2020, research shows that 50% uh, of the workplace will be um, made up of millennials. So with that comes an interesting dynamic and a cultural shift, if you will, um, that will require people to really take some time and patience to understand one another in order to work together more effectively. As I mentioned, um, you can see from this chart that we just kind of collected some information on the different generations and what their perspectives are of different topics. Um, and with that comes a uh, different view of the workplace, different view of their self, different view of relationships, and all of those come together to be working together. So sometimes my perception of what a workday is or my perception of work is very different from what Jessica's is. And it's helpful for me to learn that so that I can connect with her better and especially for working on different projects to get a better sense of, of what your philosophy is. So Jess, looking at the chart, which is your favorite? I would have to say the high-tech topic. Um, technology has been a huge part of my life mm -hmm. from my younger years in elementary school, high school, college, to now in my workplace and in my position. I've never doubted not using technology for any purpose, mm -hmm. but I have seen how it has shift the dynamic in a workplace for more seasoned employees to adapt mm -hmm. and incorporate more technology, either that being collaboration with their colleagues, uh, using Slack, an mm -hmm. app messaging uh, platform to communicate with their coworkers mm -hmm. on projects and things that they're working on. So that would definitely be my favorite. Before we dive into talking about reverse mentoring, I want to give a little background information. Way back in the 1990s, <laughs> just kidding, very recently, GE CEO Jack Welsh incorporated this in his workplace where he had his recently hired employees pair up with their seasoned employees to teach them how to use the computers and the technology. And so here we think of this typical reverse mentoring definition of a younger generation helping out the seasoned generation. Um, just like how we think of a regular mentoring program where we've got seasoned, uh, seasoned employees helping out those younger generations. So reverse mentoring just swaps that. Um, but it's more than just teaching seasoned employees how to use technology and social media. There can be a lot of mutual benefits between the two as we've experienced mm -hmm. in our reverse mentoring relationship. And so now looking at some of the values that reverse mentoring provides in a multi-generational workplace, we can see that as your employees are engaging with one another, learning more about each other, you're going to have this strengthened relationship between your coworkers and colleagues. Uh, you're going to learn more about each other, um, mixing, mingling in there, um, things that both parties can kind of take away and use in their professional lives, but also maybe in their personal mm -hmm. lives as well. Reverse mentoring is also a great way to achieve strategic goals and objectives in your organization. For an example, my relationship with Marsha, with you, was great in a sense that I really learned how to become the professional I am in a workplace, how to grow connections with my colleagues and our commissioner, to navigate and broaden not just what I do in my role and my title, but broaden that out to learn more about myself, learn more about what I want to do, and really feel connected to this organization, mm -hmm. which has increased my desire to stay at the American East. We're here to talk about 
reverse mentoring and the multi-generational diversity, but it also helps foster just diversity and inclusion in a bigger sense, where, like you had mentioned, uh, workplaces you see now have four to five different generations in there. And so as you have those conversations, you have those reverse mentoring relationships, you're really fostering that diversity and inclusion in your workplace. And as we always will see, technology continues to become more prevalent in our lives, not just in the workplace, but our personal lives as well. And so having those relationships, continuing to like keep a pulse on the technology and everything that we can incorporate in our workplace mm -hmm. will be a benefit. Reverse mentoring is definitely meant to empower your employees. For me, through our relationship, I've felt more confident in the decisions that I'm making mm -hmm. I felt confident in the way I'm communicating and how I need to be communicating effectively in my position and outside of life as well. It has also, in different topics, helped me manage up to my supervisor. It's helped me with my negotiation skills. It's helped me confront challenging conversations or wanting to figure out solutions and um, even have feeling confident enough to go to our commissioner and have these conversations. And so I've truly felt empowered as this reverse mentoring relationship has only developed. Mm -hmm. As we shift our focus um, to seasoned employees, how reverse mentoring can really become a value for them. As you've talked in your story, incorporating that technology, social media being mm -hmm. a large one, you're gonna get seasoned employees feeling outside and outside of their comfort zone and to learn new skills. And just as Jess has mastered those skills and I've seen her grown, especially in our workplace, in meetings, becoming much more of a leader and having a leadership role, she has helped me really, I wouldn't say master, but feel uh, definitely a, a much more comfort with social media, uh, interacting on social media, um, understanding it, uh, especially because I think that's important to know when to tweet, what to tweet, um, how to use it more effectively, especially when you're trying to reach uh, different constituent groups, um, and really to work more effectively with the younger generation. Um, I think there's a, a lot to be said about the dynamic of running a meeting with a multi-generation. and. I have to be, when I'm running a meeting um, or facilitating a meeting, I have to be sure that I'm able to meet the needs of the people in the room. And uh, the younger generation may have different needs um, than seasoned, the seasoned generation. And I just have to, it just has helped me be aware of those things um, and f to improve my own facilitation skills. And then another great value of reverse mentoring is that it just develops us all as lifelong mm -hmm. learners. I think it's another important note to mention here is when we think of those we serve and those we are trying to be most connected with, right. it's our student athletes. Sure. And they are the younger generation and they will become the younger employees. Right. And so keeping that pulse um, having these reverse mentoring relationships mm -hmm. only help us better understand one another and can ultimately improve mm -hmm. our way and our effectiveness yeah. when serving our student athletes. And also important for you, Jess, when you do, when and if you ever do go to another position, you know you carry this all with you and you're going to be entering a workplace that may have more people and it may have a, a broader um, diversity of, of um, generational difference, if you will. And I think that will help you. You walk into that, you already, you have those skills intact and you, you are gonna know how to, you know, effectively connect with, with those people. A key element that has really helped foster um, our reverse mentoring relationship and help, help us be, kind of help it be more successful is the um, organizational structure of our of the America East Conference. Um, and Jess, this is new to you, maybe, since this is your first experience, first job, is that most organizations, it's very common, and we do have this as well, are more hierarchical in nature, meaning top-down. 
um, especially if we're you're in a larger organization. We have a smaller organization. We have 11 people in our organization. Our structure at the America East Conference is um, a flat structure. There are definitely hierarchical elements to our structure, but for the most part is very flat, uh, meaning that we can go and we can move very horizontally into different areas. We don't necessarily have to stay in our, in our own spot. I'm in the consortium, which is very different from the rest of our organization, but I can easily talk to Jess at any time and we kind of cross function in that way. And um, you'll see from the diagram that our, how that flatness shows. Now, many other organizations are hierarchical because they are so large. It's possible within that hierarchy to have kind of flat units that work together and can communicate more effectively instead of up and down, and it, they can also work across. So it is, it is possible to implement that within a larger organizational structure. Now when we think about how to implement this reverse mentoring in your program, I think back to how we started our relationship. Mm -hmm. It was very authentic, in the moment, informal, um, really centered around obviously social media mm -hmm. and implementing that into right. your work. But then of that it became something bigger, obviously. We just have conversations when need be. Mm -hmm. Um, so, generally, you can see that your more seasoned employees will have that sort of hesitation towards a reverse mentoring program in your organization because of maybe they're not necessarily willing or used to receiving that direct feedback from someone who's younger than them. Mm -hmm. And so you can kind of think of it as a mentoring program or even a co-coaching or co-mentoring program. It's really more about each individual being able to advise and coach each other. You're give, it's a give and take in that relationship. Mm -hmm. And just as mentoring programs have these parameters and things set up, uh, you'll want to do that as well with your reverse mentoring program. Is it formal? Is it informal? Are you talking on the phone? Is it in person? Are you going to a coffee shop or is it just in your office? Mm -hmm. All things that between the two individuals, you figure out what works best for you. Another great way to implement reverse mentoring, just as we touched on earlier in the value of reverse mentoring, is connecting it to those objectives in your organization, mm -hmm. uh, attaching it to a business strategy or a goal or something that you guys want to achieve in your department. Uh, this easily was done when our, rela mm -hmm. our relationship started was because in your job working on social media and promoting the academic consortium through that platform we were able to teach one another mm -hmm. about you know what your focus and what your goal is and then how I can help you on the digital social space mm -hmm. to achieve that and so tying it to a business objective or a strategy is a great way to mm -hmm. implement reverse mentoring. And also it's important just that through those conversations, our early conversations, there was a lot of trust that was built. Um, and that was just kind of, there's no magical formula to doing that. It's just something that formed from our different conversations, which for me, I can ask you pretty much just about anything if I need your perspective. And I think that works the other way too, that if there's something you have to ask me, you know that in terms of confidentiality or just wanting to get some feedback, you're gonna get you know, some, some solid feedback. Absolutely, and it's really important too, as you mentioned, creating that safe space in that reverse mentoring relationship. A space where the stereotypes are washed mm -hmm. away and not brought up. Um, you're not shaming generations. Mm -hmm. There are no dumb questions. Right. And like you said, really having that at the forefront mm -hmm. and going along with that will be really important in that reverse mentoring relationship yeah. in the beginning. It's a key element. Our organization does this where we have events throughout the year spread out, mm -hmm. either it be our holiday party, a happy hour, a get together, We've got car rides and train rides where we've got these events where we're interacting with one another. And even though I feel like I don't have like formal reverse mentoring relationships with my other coworkers in the office, through these different events where we're engaging, mm -hmm. we're having those conversations, learning more about each other, 
and they're just kind of popping up organically. Right. And so a great way to implement that right. reverse mentoring kind and of dynamic. Even across our conference, in the fall and in the summer, we have our, our fall and summer meetings, and there's exposure there to a, a wide array of different generations and different people that you're not used to working with all the time. So there's an opportunity to do some networking, meet new people. And I think through this um, reverse mentoring experience, we both probably feel a little more comfortable about kind of initiating those conversations. Absolutely. And I think even too, so when you've got this mindset or awareness or knowledge behind what reverse mentoring is and how it can help, you can, ha you can have these like mini mentoring mm -hmm. sessions right. where they're just you know maybe one-off conversations with individuals but both individuals are taking something away that they never right. knew. A great thing to remember is that great leaders recognize their employees as individuals and not generational groups mm -hmm. and so in this workplace we think of these stereotypes with multi-generations we don't want to have those. Um, we all come from different backgrounds, we all come from different stories and reverse mentoring can kind of break that down and leaders kind of from the top down, they can recognize, hey, maybe not staying up on like what's the latest trend out there, let's just like tag along and do that, mm -hmm. but knowing what's gonna be best for the organization and for mm -hmm. their coworkers and, and their employees. Well, and there's also a lot of commonalities, there's a lot of common values. We both are interested and care about our benefits, for instance. Um, and that's something that kind of is that crosses the generations. We're concerned and, and interested in our compensation and our longevity in an organization um, and our leadership opportunities, our professional development opportunities. So finding those themes um, that all generations are kind of interested in and value kind of prevents people from pigeonholing different generations and stereotyping, as you mentioned. And you just touched on this professional development. Providing those opportunities for your employees to kind of learn outside of maybe something that's outside of their job and their title, um, or even maybe it's related to that, but a place where they have the opportunity to expand their knowledge, interact with different professionals, individuals, and really feel passionate and invested mm -hmm. in what they want to learn and become a better professional. In exploring uh, reverse mentoring um, in, in, some, in some of the research, um, one of the sites that I've gone to quite a bit for professional development information is called the Center for Creative Leadership. It has a lot of comprehensive information on leadership, developing leaders, but also uh, more importantly and connected to this topic is kind of the emerging trends for transformational leaders. Um, and one of the things that I pulled from their organization is just a chart of the emer of emerging trends, that, that there are seven emerging trends that transformational leaders should really be aware of. Uh, and they range anywhere from kind of rebooting your culture and having that become uh, and something that's very important and that you investigate and explore with, your, with, with all of your employees, digital fluency, being uh, able to change very quickly, kind of change endurance, um, breaking, uh, kicking the glass, meaning more opportunities for women, um, as well as um, embracing disruption. So now, in any organization, there can be media change and shift that, has, that we all have to adjust to. So within those emerging trends, there are generational implications. Um, and it was just very interesting to read about those trends, learn about them a little bit more in terms of leadership of our organizations and what to, what to be how to prepare better for that, but also to think about how each generation each generation is going to be affected by those trends. To be an effective transformational leader, it's very important that you keep an eye on the emerging trends in the workplace and uh, across the globe right now. Uh, and as we've mentioned, you know, with four or five generations working together in a workplace, it's very important that you see uh, and identify tools like reverse mentoring that can help connect those generations so that you don't end up with, like this comic, I'll have someone from my generation get in touch with someone from your generation.